Asherman syndrome is not a direct cause of ovulation dysfunction, but it causes amenorrhea and the amenorrhea that Asherman syndrome causes is called as secondary amenorrhea. Uh, we know that primary amenorrhea is absence of menses altogether that female never uh, experience menses that is called as a primary amenorrhea and the secondary amenorrhea is that female previously had menses normal menses but uh, now she is not menstruating for about three months that would be called as secondary amenorrhea so Asherman syndrome is causing secondary amenorrhea and uh, an ovulation Asherman syndrome is an uncommon acquired gynecological disorder that is characterized by changes in the menstrual cycle so the women that have this acquired uh, syndrome they have decreased menstrual flow and that could be due to uh, the uh, inflammation of the lining of the uterus uh, th uh, that would be called as uh, like endometriosis and it is called uh, it is caused by the development of bands of scar tissue like we can see here these bands they would narrow down the uterus uh, lumen so these bands develop due to uh, uh, inflammation and uh, so it is joining the parts of the walls of the uterus to one another so the volume uh, lumen of the uh, uterine cavity would reduce that is also called as uh, intrauterine adhesions so uh, the uh, and uh, symptoms of this uh, Asherman syndrome are hypomenorrhea. Hypomenorrhea mean reduced blood flow at menses, or it could be amenorrhea, absence of uh, menses, could be uh, a lot of abdominal pains, and infertility and miscarriages would be there. So, the causes of this. Uh, rare disorder is uh, we have to keep it remember that it is acquired so the cause as the Asherman syndrome is an acquired uh, syndrome so the causes would be environmental or acquired uh, therefore dilation and curettage are the most uh, important and abundant cause of the uh, Asherman syndrome uh, D and C dilation and curettage are uh, the techniques are uh, being used to uh, remove the dead fetal material from the uh, women uh, uterus uh, through the uh, after miscarriages so the, uh, the D and C are also used for removing any scar tissue in the uterus uh, so these uh, procedure or surgeries in the uterus would be the most important cause uh, they are about 20% uh, women going through DNC develop Asherman syndrome so uh, the uh, endometriosis is also a cause endometriosis is inflammation of the uh, uterus and these uh, inflammation may also uh, cause the adhesion of the walls of the uh, uterus and infections like tuberculosis and, and other infections uh, could be the uh, cause of uh, Asherman syndrome that is the inflammation and adhesion of the uh, uterus wall and then uh, the diagnosis would be done the best method is to uh, do hysteroscopy is the endoscopy of the uterus uh, to see the uterine wall directly and then uh, the treatment option are laser therapy to cut the bands 
that are lining the uterus walls and same purpose could be done through uh, surgeries and the hormonal replacement therapy is also recommended to induce menstrual cycle or to regulate menstrual cycle so Asherman syndrome is we said an acquired uh, syndrome as we say in case of male infertility prolactin has its role similarly in female infertility prolactin uh, pituitary tumors or maternal lacta lactation that causes the high levels of uh, prolactin they would lower the fertility uh, parameters and uh, the direct relationship between uh, the gonadotropin hormone and prolactin is very well known as we know the prolactin it gives negative feedback to the uh, pituitary and then uh, decreases the levels of LH and FSH so the uh, females or women that have pituitary tumors uh, prolactinomas they would have high concentration of prolactins and similarly the uh, women that are lactating they would have high levels of prolactin in their blood uh, due to the uh, effect of suckling and we know the prolactin it is related with the uh, production of milk in memory glands and it is also required for uh, the uh, maternal care so it is uh, the high level of uh, prolactin they would uh, lower the gonadotropins uh, so uh, gonadotropin hormone so similarly pituitary adenomas as we saw in case of male uh, infertility uh, they would result in lower levels of uh, gonadotropin hormones so there would be decrease in uh, the fertility levels of the uh, women and we know these gonadotropin and hormone they would act on uh, the ovaries to uh, increase the production and uh, the uh, we can say the uh, production of estrogen and can increase the uh, growth of follicles so these uh, pituitary adenomas they may uh, disrupt gonadotropin hormone and so there would be disruption of the whole process hypothyroidism as the thyroid hormone it is also can affect directly the uh, ovulation process or it can affect through hyperprolactinemia so the hypothyroidism it is a very important factor of an ovulation the hypothyroidism may affect ovarian function uh, through a direct and indirect way so in indirect way the hormonal functions are disrupted that are the uh, hypothyroidism may disrupt the normal cyclic release of LH and FSH from the uh, pituitary that may result in oligomenorrhea, menorrhagia and amenorrhea oligomenorrhea we know is the uh, infrequent uh, menses and uh, menorrhagia mean uh, the uh, a lot of uh, bleeding during menses more than for seven days and menorrhagia is mainly caused because hypothyroidism may result in uh, reduction of the coagulation factors so there would be no uh, coagulation factor and bleeding would be continued and amenorrhea mean absence of menses so disruption of LH and FSH may also result in an ovulation so that would cause infertility by disruption of LH and FSH another way of disruption of LH and FSH is by hyperprolactinemia the hypothyroidism may result in release of more uh, prolactin and there would be uh, neg uh, negative feedback on GnRH in hypothalamus on LH and FSH do not release these hormone so there would be uh, anovulation oligomenorrhea and menorrhagia or amenorrhea 
so uh, the direct method of action uh, that is to disrupt the ovulation is that receptor of t3 t4 and tsh are found on the granulosa cells cumulus cells and oocytes themselves uh, so the uh, it mean the growth of follicles is dependent on uh, the thyroid hormone and tsh also so the uh, along with the uh, lh and fsh and the uh, growth hormone so if t3 t4 are not there uh, then the uh, normal growth of the follicles would be affected and then another thing that t3 t4 are suspected to mature or activate receptors of the lh on granulosa cells so if uh, t3 t4 are not present then these uh, granulosa cell would be uh, resistant to lh they would not respond to lh so hypothyroidism is affecting the uh, ovulation process directly and indirectly obesity and overweight actually represent accumulation of uh, fats in body and the fats because the sex hormones are steroid hormones so they may accumulate more sex hormones the steroid hormone and they may uh, disrupt the equilibrium of uh, hormones bound with the uh, sex hormone binding globulin so they may become reservoir of sex hormone so the they would uh, disrupt the normal levels of sex hormone in plasma and uh, the normal regulation through hypothermic pituitary gonadal axis and then we know in case of pcos we saw that the uh, fats they can convert one type of androgen into another type of more potent type of androgens so they can convert a p androstenedione into testosterone so that would cause as hyperandrogenism so the pcos like uh, symptoms would be uh, there so they also the fats they may aromatize this testosterone further into estrogen so high levels of estrogen all the time irrespective of the uh, type of cycle uh, they would be present and uh, then they would result in an ovulation and then insulin resistance uh, is also uh, evident that obesity would bring insulin resistance and hyperinsulinoma as we uh, insulinemia that we saw in case of uh, the uh, pcos we saw it and then the fats they may directly disrupt hypothalamopituitary gonadal axis Uh, the fats uh, are the adipocytes the cells of the fat tissue adipose tissue these cells they release certain uh, signaling chemicals and these uh, uh, are called as adipokines so these adipokines they may directly go to hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis and uh, they may disrupt normal levels of uh, the uh, gonadotropes lh and fsh so uh, like leptin is one of the best known uh, adipokine that would act on hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis and regulate it and uh, it is a hormone endocrine hormone so then body mass distribution it is also affecting the uh, uh, ovary function Uh, because uh, it was seen that the people or the women that have central obesity mean they have to accumulate uh, fat in the abdominal uh, cavity they would have higher levels of lh and androgens as compared to those that gather fats on their uh, shoulders or the hips so the uh, women that have central obesity they have more chances of disruption of lh and androgens uh, higher levels of lh and androgens and then the uh, uh, an ovulation would occur so obesity may directly or indirectly is affecting the 
uh, normal ovulation from the ovaries.